I'm Annie Laurie Gaylord. And I'm Dan Barker. We're co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. On today's Free Thought Matters, we're delighted to have back with us a true champion of the secular community, Congressman Jared Huffman, the only openly non-religious member of Congress. We'll be right back. The Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces Free Thought Matters, is the nation's largest association of free thinkers, that's atheists, agnostics, and other non-believers. We invite you to join us in our vital work to keep our secular government free from religious influence. Become a member at ffrf.org or ask for a complimentary copy of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. Freedom depends on free thinkers. Watch prior episodes of Free Thought Matters on FFRF's YouTube channel. I'm Dan Barker. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And as promised, our guest today is U.S. Representative Jared Huffman. He's from California's second congressional district representing Marin County, north of the Golden Gate Bridge, all the way up to the Oregon border. Representative Huffman currently identifies as the only openly non-religious member of Congress. He's co-founder and co-chair of the Congressional Free Thought Caucus, along with Representative Jamie Raskin from Maryland. The Congressional Free Thought Caucus promotes public policy formed on the basis of reason, evidence, science, and strong moral values protects the secular character of our government by adhering to the strict constitutional principle of the separation of church and state, opposes government discrimination against atheists, agnostics, humanists, seekers, religious and non-religious persons, and to champion the value of freedom of thought and conscience worldwide, and provides a forum for members of Congress to discuss their moral frameworks, ethical values, and personal religious journeys. So, among other things, um, we're going to talk with Representative Huffman about free thought issues in Congress, including something called the Healthcare Sharing Ministries, what it is, why it's harmful, and what Representative Huffman is recommending that Congress should be taking, what action it should be taking to rein them in. So, Representative Huffman, welcome back to Free Thought Matters. Well, thanks. It's great to be with both of you. Um, always a pleasure to be on your show. So, you're you're very brave. Uh, you, you've come out as non-religious, as a member of Congress. In fact, you're the only elected official to publicly identify, so far, as a non-religious humanist. So, why did you decide that it was important for you to say that publicly? Well, I, I guess I'm kind of old school. I, I think we should just tell the truth. <laughs> there are a lot of fakers in the United States Congress, so uh, that's really what it comes down to. People duck the question. There, there are a ton more non-believers. I'm not the only one. Uh, and there are a lot of people that pretend to be religious that really aren't. That's no surprise to you. So uh, I just uh, you know, found it all kind of distasteful and wanted to be a little more authentic with uh, telling people what my p personal moral framework is. And I, uh, I think people are entitled to know. After you came out like that, it didn't hurt your next election at all, did it? Nah, it was just fine. Huh. People, people care about what you do, not what you believe. Exactly. We do not have religious tests in this country. That's right. Uh, and thankfully, especially in my district, for the most part, people don't really care what your religious views are if you're doing good work. So before we get into some of the nitty gritty in Congress, you mentioned that you wanted to be authentic about what your real moral framework is. So what is your moral framework if, if you don't believe in a God? Sure. Well, I consider myself a humanist. And uh, honestly, I, I uh, drifted for years without feeling like there was a framework or a label that I could feel good about. But uh, the more I began learning about humanism, which, you know, is 
can describe as good without God. Uh, I came to feel that's exactly how I believe uh, in following science and facts and uh, leading a moral life uh, where we look out for each other and try to do the right thing, not because we want an afterlife or you know believe that uh, some divine entity is telling us to do that, but because we as human beings believe it's the right thing to do. Not to belabor it, but if you don't mind our asking, what did you have a religious background? What was that? I did. I grew up in a branch of the Mormon Church in the reorganized Latter-day Saints Church. was very religious up until I was about 19 and uh, have been a spiritual drifter ever since. Speaking about the Congressional Free Thought Caucus, which is pretty exciting to see a, a bunch of members of Congress talking about these issues of state church separation and that, we saw that you do a number of things, and you uh, sent a letter to um, the Bureau of Labor about these health care sharing ministries. And can yeah. you explain what those are and what the problem is with these health care sharing ministries? Yeah, so, so Dan, the, it's a great example of what the Free Thought Caucus can do, what it is doing. Uh, because no one else in Congress and very few people anywhere in the country are even talking about this. Uh, there are these scams out there that are taking advantage of a loophole in the Affordable Care Act that was meant to allow these Christian, primarily, or religious health care ministries to operate separately from health insurance. And, uh, you know, this was really meant to uh, address things like the Amish community, which, you know, kind of want to take care of, they're so insular, they want to take care of the religious needs of their own um community, their own members. And so, you know, whether it was a good idea or not, it was put into the Afford Affordable Care Act that this could happen. Um, and some people have figured out there is big money in putting together these health care sharing ministries, um, basically uh, marketing them exactly the way you would health insurance policies, health insurance plans, deceiving an awful lot of people some of these ministries have grown to be huge. There's about a million and a half Americans now that think they are getting something like health insurance from one of these ministries. It's a multi, multi-million dollar uh, business. And when people actually get sick and need health care, they find out uh, it's a house of cards. It's just a scam. So what the Free Thought Caucus has done, first, we uh, invited in a lawyer who has become quite an expert on uh, this subject to tell us all about it. And we were just incredulous to even hear that this exists because it's such a scam and it's so offensive. Uh, but then we wrote a letter to the FTC urging them to investigate unfair and deceptive marketing practices that we think um, are defrauding a lot of consumers. Well, you've done an excellent job explaining what this healthcare ministry is, which most Americans have never heard about, but Representative Huffman, if you'll indulge us, we thought an easy way to sort of introduce viewers to this issue is to play a brief excerpt from comedian John Oliver. That ad is for something called a healthcare sharing ministry. And if you haven't heard of them before, you may have come across one and not even realized it because they have been growing fast in the US. And the key phrase in that ad is freedom from insurance. Because the most important thing to know about healthcare sharing ministries, or HCSMs, isn't just that they can be cheaper than health insurance, which they can, is that they are also not health insurance. Generally, they are non-profits where people who share religious beliefs, usually Christianity, agree to help cover each other's medical bills. So, Representative Huffman, what's the catch? What's the problem with how healthcare sharing ministries work? I wish there was just one catch. The truth is uh, there is a, an almost endless number of trap doors uh, when it comes to this stuff. Uh, people who sign up and send their money to these healthcare sharing ministries agree to um, a, a myriad of disclaimers that disclaim uh, the obligation to actually pay for a whole bunch of actual health services, including you know, reproductive health care. Uh, they agree to getting nothing if it turns out that they haven't abided by, you know, certain moral standards that the health care sharing ministry uh, can sort of retroactively uh, impose and interpret at its discretion. I, I mean, the contracts themselves uh, are just unconscionable and one-sided. Um, but, you know, that uh, John Oliver doesn't have time in his show to go fully 
in and do justice to just what a scam it is. Uh, hopefully the FTC will if it does a serious investigation. And uh, we would like to see a major crackdown on this. So we actually do have another really short clip from John Oliver just on that point you were making. And we haven't even gotten to one of the biggest excuses HCSMs can use to deny coverage, and that is morality. Because that means that you can be denied coverage for basically anything. This is a program of the Christian Care Ministry. And people who smoke or same-sex couples need not apply. The program also won't pay for illnesses related to alcohol, abortion, or other lifestyle-related choices. I need to know that I'm not going to be paying for someone else who's decided to sit on the couch and eat bonbons all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Representative Hoffman, you and Representatives Jamie Raskin, Mark Pocan, Eleanor Holmes Norton are asking the Federal Trade Commission Bureau of Consumer Protection to investigate the health care sharing ministries, or is there more to it? No, that it starts with an investigation from the consumer protection perspective. Um, there could be more to it, though. I mean, uh, th this seems just ripe for class action litigation around the country. I'm surprised that we haven't seen more of that. The California Attorney General uh, has issued a cease and desist um, letter in response to one of the bigger Christian health uh, sharing ministries. I believe other attorney generals around the country are starting to um, get wise to this as well. So in the state of California, this isn't really kosher. Um, they've also issued consumer alerts, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And that's something that all of us can be part of. Um, if you know anyone who has been suckered into one of these plans, um, you need to make sure that they understand uh, you know, just how exposed and vulnerable they are. This would be like a bunch of people in the church saying, our home insurance rates are too expensive, so let's not buy home insurance. Let's just put our money in a pool, and if one of your houses catches fire, well, we'll see if there's any cash there to pay for it. It seems really loose and, and, and sloppy, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it does, Dan, but in, in your scenario, those people would be kind of collectively managing their own money together. Uh, the insidious thing about this is uh, these these shadowy entities take their money uh, and then don't give it back to them when they need it. So um, it's very sinister and it's big money uh, for these so-called ministries. So we're going to take a break, uh, Representative Huffman, and after the break we're going to ask about uh, what is some of the opposition to reining in the health care sharing ministries. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist. When I first recorded that commercial back in 2014, being openly atheist in America was still fairly uncommon. Today, the fastest growing religious group in the country is the non-religious, especially among the young. That progress is heartening, but the religious pushback is fierce and the forces of Christian nationalism are well organized. Our progress won't continue unless we work together so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail. That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. We're delighted to be talking with Representative Jared Huffman, a member of Congress who represents Northern California, who openly identifies as a non-religious humanist, and who founded and co-chairs the Congressional Free Thought Caucus. So thanks again for joining us. Oh, it's great to be with you. So, Representative Huffman, who could possibly be opposed to reining in these health care sharing ministries? I think it's pretty predictable what we're going to hear back from uh, particularly the evangelical Christian community. This seems like such a no-brainer from a consumer protection point of view, from a public policy point of view, but um, we all know that they're going to, they're going to say this is an attack on religion uh, because uh, that's, that's what they do with things, uh, just about anything they can these days. So it'll be sensationalized. I, I suspect we might even hear about it on, you know, Fox News and the usual outlets says is, is and, and since it's coming up on Christmas, you know, maybe it'll be tied in on the war, the, the fake war on Christmas. Huh. 
yeah, we have to prepare for that. <laughs> uh, so what could our, FFRF has 35,000, more than 35,000 current dues-paying members. Um, one in four Americans today identifies as non-religious. What can somebody who thinks this is a, a terrible sham and, and should be opposed, what can they do to help uh, you in Congress do something about this? Well, they, they can support the Freedom From Religious Foundation and the other groups that are out there spotlighting uh, these scams, in some cases litigating against them. Uh, they can tell everyone they know to avoid these things. You know, they, you can listen, I listen to Sirius XM radio and on mainstream channels like CNN, I hear the radio ads for these healthcare sharing ministries and they sound just like uh, religious insurance products. Uh, so it's important that we spread the word to everyone we know that they're, they're really not. They're just a scam that uh, takes your money and then leaves you in the lurch if you need uh, the health care support. So let's talk about voting. Uh, FFRF, of course, we're a nonprofit 501c3, and we're not political, we're not partisan. But voting is a, a patriotic duty. What, 90-some percent of our members? 98% of our members are registered voters. Registered voters. So let's talk about the secular vote. There's a lot of emphasis about the religious right and their influence, but since a quarter of us now identify as non-religious, it seems nobody is wooing our votes, or perhaps the secular vote just being taken for granted. What should secular voters be doing to make our voices heard going into these upcoming elections? I think you should be demanding that uh, candidates reaffirm the commitment to the separation of church and state. It's pretty much that simple. Uh, we are being uh, dragged down the slippery slope of theocracy in so many ways. And uh, it's very important, just as voters and as good citizens, that um, we call that out and say you no know, with our vote, with our activism and good citizenship, um, hang on to that secular character of our government. So important, and we don't hear candidates anymore saying what JFK had to do as a presidential candidate, you know, when he was vetted before the Houston um, <clears throat> pastors in 1960 saying, I believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute. Yeah. So what you're saying is music to our ears. What do you think, I mean, what is at stake with the midterms? Well, uh, everything is at stake uh, with these midterms. I mean, democracy itself, it's no exaggeration. Uh, when you look at a party that uh, has just been fully co-opted by Donald Trump and the big lie uh, and the very sinister agenda behind it that includes you know, empowering Christian fundamentalists to take over public policy and to institutionalize their religious views, um, that's a lot at stake. And, uh, it, you know, the idea that uh, with the defeat of Donald Trump that all of this went away or that with the defeat of the January 6th insurrection, um, the threat to democracy uh, left us, no, uh, it's still with us in a big, big way. They are regrouping. They are coming back. They've got friends in high places uh, wearing robes on the Supreme Court. And uh, we have every reason to be uh, afraid. I don't like to stoke fear. You know, it can be uh, misused, that particular tactic. But if fear motivates you to get out there and vote in the 2022 cycle, yeah, be afraid. Well, it looks like you agree with us that January 6th was a faith-based initiative. It was Christian nationalism in full view. Oh, it was, it, it smacked of Christian nationalism in every way. And, and I think you'll be hearing more about that in the weeks ahead. Um, we are going to be, the, the uh, Congressional Free Thought Caucus is going to be uh, inviting in some experts who have taken a deep dive on this subject and will be receiving a report from them that I think will be a, a little bit of a bombshell. This is something that um, many of your viewers are going to be familiar with because they saw the images of, you know, these, these crazy people in ras raccoon skin hats, you know, pausing to pray to Jesus on the Senate floor as they were uh, you know, trying to overthrow our government. Uh, but there's a lot more to it than that. And uh, we think that this deep dive, this this study that we're going to receive uh, will really help highlight the central role that Christian nationalism played in all of this. Well, stay tuned, and we'll be letting everybody know about that. So it's been, what, about four years since you came out publicly as a nonbeliever. 
Do you think the climate is improving, the climate for free thinkers and seculars and for the separation of church and state? Has it improved at all since you made that announcement? Or has it gotten worse? I, I do think so. Yeah, I, I think that the trajectory um, is, is pretty undeniable, especially with young people in this country. Um, they don't trust organized religion, anything like their uh, prior generations did. Um, so the more younger Americans are out there voting, running for office, you know, we're, we're sort of inexorably um, moving uh, towards greater acceptance, I think, of, of people who are non-religious or have, uh, you know, religious views outside of the mainstream. Yeah, I think it's never been a better time to be a free thinker. The courts, that's a different matter. But I want to talk about the courts, but let's talk first about the Congressional Free Thought Caucus. Uh, we we mm -hmm. read the... Uh, kind of the, what that stands for at the beginning of the show. Uh, what is it and, and how has its growth been? How many members are there today? So we're up to 14 members of this Free Thought Caucus, which is, is great. And I think we've got room to grow even further. Um, just as important, uh, we are really becoming the go-to place in the Congress to tackle these issues like the, the Christian health sharing ministry scams that no one else is talking about. Um, we are the place where we can have a conversation that um, is kind of a counterbalancing um, effect to things like the Congressional Prayer Breakfast, which we know, you know, kind of has this this dark uh, history behind it. These weird, you know, creepy connections with shadowy evangelical groups that wade into politics and throw their political weight around again, dragging us toward theocracy, uh, we can be a counterweight to all of that, and I think we're, we're starting to do it. And the, the prayer breakfast is not an official governmental event. It's a private, nonprofit group. We are asking members of Congress to, to just not go. They, nobody has to go to that event, do they? Yeah. But you'd never know that it wasn't an official government event. I mean, it is all about the U.S. Capitol and members of Congress and presidents and uh, it is uh, organized and promoted and convened uh, in a way that's very intertwined with the Congress and, and the president. Yeah, something that we have been trying to uh, challenge Congress to stop doing for a long time. So we're yeah. so glad to have your support on that. So uh, you care about um, science, the Scientific Integrity Act. Uh, and of course, with this pandemic and with the threats to health and to climate and all that, uh, is the caucus uh, focusing and pushing scientific literacy? Yeah, we're trying. We've brought in, you know, Nobel scientists to be guest speakers. We've tried to highlight ways in which, um, you know, religion and science are at odds, and uh, you know how that translates to to bad public policy. So uh, we're definitely doing our part, but uh, we're we've got more work to do, obviously, because uh, when you look at how our country is responding to this pandemic, among other things. Science is not winning. Yes, and now you're from California where there's a lot more vaccine mandates. It's one of the only states that's mandating that eligible students also oh. uh, get vaccinated as well as teachers and healthcare workers. But in, in our country, looking at our country overall, how do you feel about all of this anti-vaccine um, backlash and how, how did a rational, um, medical response to a pandemic becomes so politicized? Well, there's a lot to that question, and I, I wish I uh, had a simple answer to it. There, there are many factors. But, uh, you know, I believe social media has a lot to do with it. So many people are getting their news and information from social media these days, and the more we learn about their algorithms and the way they monetize uh, you know, hate and division and ignorance, uh, the more troubling that ought to be to all of us. So the last time you were on Free Thought Matters, and it was the fall of 2019, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was still on the court. And since then, of course, she's been replaced by Amy Coney Barrett. Uh, yeah. Are you concerned about how Trump has captured much of the judiciary and what it's going to mean for civil liberties? Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, you've already seen that begin uh, to play out in, in this expansive uh, notion of religious liberty in some of their decisions. There, there's going to be more bad 
decisions to come, women's reproductive rights are in big, big trouble. Um, so uh, what, what does that mean? It ought to motivate everyone going into this 2022 cycle to make sure that uh, we hang on to the United States Senate so that we can uh, continue to, uh, you know, if there are vacancies on the court, and I hope Justice Breyer will step down in time for us to replace him with someone good. Um, but there will be other vacancies, and we can, over time, uh, you know, restore a sensible balance to the court, but only if we've got the Senate and the presidency. So we have about a minute left here. Um, you know, you're pushing for change and for progress, but you must, you know, maybe you might feel frustrated or just dispirited at the glacial pace of it all. What keeps you going? Yeah, well, I, look, the, the glacial pace and incrementalism, uh, you, you can sort of uh, find a Zen and keep going uh, with that on some things. You know, our march towards social justice and, uh, you know, civil rights and, and a lot of other things has just taken time, way more time than it should have. But, you know, if you believe we're continuing, uh, you know, on the arc of history that bends towards justice, you can, you can keep going. Uh, the one that doesn't really work with that is climate change because winning slowly is the same thing as losing. And that's the hardest one to uh, be sanguine about in this moment. Uh, we are off track badly. And the consequences of that are just so staggering and unacceptable that it ought to trouble each and every one of us you know, profoundly. So just saying, Dan, that that's the hardest one for me. Uh, I cannot rationalize my way to any kind of a comfort level on climate change because I know what's coming if we don't dramatically speed this up. Well, thank you so much for your advocacy for true religious liberty and for a reason to prevail in the separation of church and state in our government, Representative Huffman. Thanks for having me. Keep up the great work, I appreciate it. And thank you, Representative Huffman. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters. I believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute, where no religious body seeks to impose its will, directly or indirectly, upon the general populace. Let's restore respect for America's secular roots. Help the Freedom From Religion Foundation defend the wall of separation between state and church. Join us at FFRF.org. Freedom depends on freethinkers.